Hi, it's Alexis. And Christian from Tiny House Expedition. And we built our tiny house way back in 2014. With the help of friends and family, over nine months of ups and downs and trial and error, it was all worth it in the end. We built a cozy custom home of our own that led us to an adventure of a lifetime. And now we're working on a shuttle bus conversion. In our DIY Tiny Home Build Stories series, we hope to inspire and empower you to take on your own build by yourself or with help. I needed help. I, de <laughs> I definitely needed help. Hi, I'm AJ. My name is Ayana, and this is our self-converted school bus, Sweet Bee the Treehouse. Everything was a huge challenge. <laughs> Like, we, we had no idea how to do any of this stuff when we started, so every new skill was a lot to learn. Yeah. To learn and then implement. And then put on the shelf and never use again. Yeah. And then move on. Yeah. <laughs> like every other part of the build, we knew nothing about auto mechanics when we got this rig, which is why we got a rig in such bad shape, probably. <laughs> But the Nomad community is a really cool community and there are always people with more knowledge willing to teach us a few things. So, you know, we had a mechanic in Florida who taught me the simple act of taking the dog house out, which, you know, is nothing really, but if you've never done it before, I mean, we owned this bus for a while before we knew about the existence of the dog house. You know, it's a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> It's definitely, it's all been a process, you know, learning any new skill is difficult and engines are very complicated, but none of it is impossible, you know, just like learning the carpentry or the electrical or anything else, you just need somebody to lead you along a little bit. Yeah, it's almost like the mystery is the most intimidating part. Like yeah. before you peel back any layer, looking at it can feel so overwhelming. But then once you start to gain even just a little knowledge, I feel like things come into focus. Over here is our couch area. It's about five feet long. These were just uh, patio furniture cushions that we found on Wayfair, something like that. Pretty nice though. Underneath, we have additional storage. This is a lot of hobby stuff, the jewelry making, all the food photography, things are under there. And then our 110 outlets are right here. So any computers or larger electronics get charged through that. This is our lagoon mount for the table. There are two arms that kind of attach here. And then we put our walnut table on top and gives us a really nice workspace in here and some additional countertop as well. Our jacket and shoe storage. So this was actually the last thing we added to the build right before we hit the road. We had so many jackets, no place to put them. So we added these cute little animal hooks up at the top. One really important feature for the bus and a little bit of a puzzle to figure out is actually how to lock the bus, especially since we were using the handicap door as our main door. So we added this little deadbolt here and there's a little metal piece on the inside of the lever that you can actually deadbolt it closed and you can do that with the key from the outside as well. So this is our passenger seat. Uh, it was a lot of work to put this in. We had to close off the original bus doors and move our walkway over here and then, you know, bolt this through the floor. But it was really important to us to have a second comfortable seat to ride in and also to have a second seat belt so that we could drive safely. And it kind of adds to like the general open feel that we have in here. We love having people over. And so when you're hanging out, a lot of times it can get like very galley feeling in these rigs. And so adding this seat that swivels around really gives us kind of like 
a little bit more hosting space and kind of like a comfier feel, I think. And it's a super comfortable chair. It's really comfy. Craigslist is the best. Yeah, so when I kind of started following people on Instagram, one of the accounts I found was a bus conversion company out of Denver. So when I knew that we wanted a school bus, we decided, okay, we want the van front, we want this size, just because it's kind of easy enough to drive around town. You can fit in a parking space and a little bit, which we like. So once we knew the style of bus that we wanted, I reached out to them just to ask if they had anything. And they had this bus, he sent me pictures, and we went down and test drove it and decided, okay, she's coming home with us. And on our drive home, the check engine light came on. <laughs> and that has been a never ending process for us. Turns out she's a bit of a lemon. People who know engines uh, know when we say she's a 2001 Chevy mid bus their whole aura stoops a little bit and they groan like, oh, you poor sweet souls. So yeah, we essentially have had almost everything mechanically fixed in her that we possibly can, minus the transmission, which we'll just knock on everything about that <laughs> right now. So yeah, definitely going back, I think doing our due diligence and research about what kind of buses are reliable. You know, she's a diesel. We like that, everybody likes that. She'll run forever. But this uh, particular model has definitely had its fair share of issues. This little teeny sink with no hot water. As far as things that we would do differently in a second build, we would definitely not put a little RV sink in. That was a big mistake. Down here, we have our fridge. It's a 70 liter Dometic trucking fridge. So it's uh, about the size of a college mini fridge, but it has enough storage for us. We only have to buy food about every 10 days or so. We have had a few issues with uh, this fridge over time. Our first unit, the person who did our cabinetry for us didn't put in any venting, so we burned out that compressor in a couple of months. And then we burned out a second one through my error of not turning it off when we left the bus. We expected moderate weather. We are gone for two weeks. When we came back, it was over 100 degrees, and we'd burned out another compressor. So we're on our third iteration of this fridge, but we built the cabinet for this unit, so we feel kind of stuck there. <laughs> And another design flaw of ours is that we put our stove directly on top of our fridge, which exacerbates our venting problem, and that whenever we run the stove, it heats up that cabinet a lot right on top of the fridge. More strain on the fridge, more strain on our batteries. Just definitely wouldn't do that again. This is how we go to the bathroom. <laughs> We've got our Nature's Head composting toilet, which lives underneath the bed on this nice slide. We like it all right. <laughs> We've had some problems with our composting toilet. We've had gnats, which is a problem that uh, people don't talk about a lot with composting toilets, but we've had them several times and they can be a real pain to get rid of. We shower mostly at Planet Fitness. <laughs> we have a, a little rechargeable USB shower head that we can you know, heat up a pot of water and take a shower outside. Uh, we've had a few different solar shower options in the past, but mostly we rely on uh, the gym. I think you have to just jump in with both feet and get your hands dirty, you know? It all seems really difficult before you get started, but every step of the way, you'll figure it out, you know? It's hard to imagine that you're gonna build this whole thing, and then one day it's done. It's hard to imagine you're gonna make a living on the road, and then, you know, you figure it out, and it's absolutely worth it. Yeah, and the other thing I think I would say is just, like, ask for help. Like this community is such a deep well of resource and we've benefited so much from it. And uh, everyone's ready to pay it forward. 
all the time. So whatever you need, reach out, send the DMs, you know, whatever you need to do, but know that there's a really big community here to support you and help you along the way. We've been thinking about a box truck. We really like that they're boxes and that their edges are square. <laughs> Probably be a little bit easier for the build process. So yeah, we've kind of been thinking about that and mulling it over. And traveling right now with the car has been a huge gift for us, but we have thought about maybe getting like a second rig, like a cargo van or something like that and building it out into a studio slash workspace for either one of us so that the jewelry stuff doesn't explode in the whole house or Andy can have a quiet space to write during the day without my incessant noise making. <laughs> it would be nice for both of us to be able to work at the same time, which can't really happen right now. I can't be cooking while Ion is making jewelry because it's just too small a space for all that stuff. Totally. It's Alexis again and Christian from Tiny House Expedition. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And to watch the full tour of the DIY tiny home you just learned about, click over here.